Aloha. I am out here in lovely Iowa. I swear I want to move here, except you guys get like a shit ton of snow in the wintertime, and I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal with that. It is beautiful right now. And whenever right now is for you guys, this just got released, which is the BRN 180S. And I know you guys have been asking for a shorter version of the BRN 180. But before we get into this, if you haven't seen the video that I did on the BRN 180, go ahead and watch that. The link to that is going to be down in the description. We're going to look at the BRN 180S which of course is based on the AR-18 or AR-180, right. depending on what period of time, right? Correct. So the original AR-18 had a stamped steel receiver. These of course don't because CNC machining nowadays is a lot less expensive. Well, it didn't exist back then, but CNC machining is available now, which makes milled parts a lot less expensive. So this receiver is not stamped steel, it is a uh, billet machined aluminum. Right, right yeah, 7075 T6, uh, hard code anodized um, from a machined billet. Which you could argue is probably superior to a stamped steel receiver for a lot of reasons. Yeah. It, lighter, arguably stiffer. Right. And probably more reliable because the you can do it to a much greater degree of precision, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And of course, it's compatible with regular AR-15 lower receivers, which of course the AR-18 wasn't. The AR-18 had its own magazines, uh, proprietary magazines. And if Brownells put out, <laughs> hey guys, we've got this AR-18, now buy our magazines too, people would be pissed, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, <laughs> better all around just to have it to use the AR-15. It's a hard thing. call to make because was, you've got yeah. to balance between how precisely original do we want to keep things and how practical do we want to make it so people can actually get out and shoot it. Right. So walk me through this. What what makes the S different from the original uh, BRN-180? So the differences on the S um, is that instead of a 16 inch barrel, you have a 10 and a half inch barrel. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you also have a uh, adjustable gas system. Uh, so there's a suppressor setting on that as well. Okay. Can I move this with my finger, or do I need a cartridge for you, that? You're going to need some help. I'm so yeah. strong, though. Yeah, well, we'll see. See that? Oh, look I at that. Yeah. All right, so I see an S in there for suppressor. Suppressed. And there we go. U for unsuppressed. Correct. So the S setting has a wider gas port, I'm guessing? Yeah, so the S setting um, is actually going to constrict that a little bit more because you have more back pressure coming from that suppressor. Of course, the other way around. Right. So we've got a smaller gas port for suppressed and a wider gas port for unsuppressed. Correct. So you have kind of sort of a consistent amount of gas pressure from whether you're running a silencer or not. Right. And of course, that's going to vary between different suppressor companies, but for the most part, yeah. Okay. And theoretically, guns clean quality ammo, you could probably run it on either setting either way, but right. this is to improve reliability when you're running it hard, it's hot, there's a lot of carbon in it and all that. Right? Exactly. Okay. The BRN-180, the full-size version and the, the S, don't require a buffer tube or buffer spring, so we can break it in half and it's not broken. And the whole Close before firing doesn't even matter either. That right? that doesn't apply here. I mean, you might have some junk coming out of there. <laughs> you might get some brass flakes or carbon or something coming out of it, but you're not going to have a bolt carrier flying at your face if you shot it this way. Correct. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the insides of this. Okay, so a standard AR-15 lower receiver. Correct. This will fit on any AR. Right. If I'm doing this right, I pull this part off, right? Yep, you keep going. Yeah. Kind of wiggle. And we have two recoil rods, two recoil springs. Yep. And we kind of dump this guy out the back, wiggle the charging handle, and there's your bolt and carrier. Correct. So you guys have probably seen some of the other videos out there about the AR-18, the BRN-180, and you know that the the bolt is essentially an AR bolt, or at least the 
both head is about the same as an AR-15. The difference is, instead of having a direct gas impingement system where the gas is tapped off of the barrel as the bullet passes the gas port, the gas goes back through the tube, impinges on the gas key to cycle the bolt, there's a piston in here. Technically speaking, a direct gas gun is a piston gun because the tail of the bolt right. is a piston. But in practical terms, when you say gas piston, you normally mean a, a floppy thing that goes up front around the barrel, right? right? So in this, we've got... So that's the operating rod? Correct, yeah. It's your uh, standard short stroke piston type system. So. Okay. So that's going to come back and that's going to smack that little circle spot that's been marked on the, the front of this bolt carrier. Once the bolt carrier starts, starts moving, it's going to cam through this track, rotating the bolt, unlocks, continues backward, continues forward, chambers another round, the cycle begins a, a new Simba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but does it take Glock mags? Not yet. Does it have M4 feed ramps? It does. <laughs> so I say the whole M4 feed ramps <laughs> facetiously, but there's a lot of details on both of these rifles that, that you guys took the liberty of improving on the original AR-18 a bit. Um, the original AR-18 probably had like a 1 in 12 or 1 in 10 twist. I don't know. I'm sure one of you guys will nerd that up for me. But <laughs> definitely a slower twist than these have. These have a one and eight twist, right? Correct. So, of course, you can stabilize everything up to 77 grain bullets pretty easily. Yep. Uh, one and eight is going to be slow enough that you should be able to shoot varmint type bullets without blowing them up in the air, but you're capable of stabilizing the big heavy bullets. Correct. Let's get this thing back together and let's get out there and shoot it. Sounds great. Hey, that was a lot of fun. Um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to play with this thing. This place is beautiful. Your range is awesome. This gun is a ton of fun to shoot. I mean, shooting's fun, right? Shooting's supposed to be fun. Not everything has to be super practical, but this thing pretty much is. This is a lot of practical, common sense stuff all packed into this thing and i i just had a blast caleb thank you for your time Anytime. thank you for your generosity thank you guys for watching if you have some questions if you have any comments leave them below i love to hear your thoughts on things have a great day